All right, everybody. Welcome to our Alad Pod special with Dr. Payne. I'm very excited to have him here. So we are going to talk today about uh, teaching your kids at home, different activities that you can do with your kids uh, now that school is going to be closed for the for the year, um, and different tips and tricks about uh, you know activities, different things you can read with your kids, different things you should be focusing on. And I'm very excited to have. Dr. Payne here. Uh, Dr. Payne and I, and I'll bring him in right now so you all can see him. Hello there, sir. How are you? I'm well. How are you, sir? I'm very good. Yeah, it's very exciting to see you. Dr. Payne and I met uh, when he became the principal at uh, Clay Elementary over in the Hyde Park neighborhood in St. Louis City, uh, and he is currently the director of the Michelle Obama Early Childhood and Academic Center for Riverview Gardens. So we're very excited to have him here. Obviously, he's not in his office right now because he is practicing physical distancing. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So I'm really excited to have you here. You know, I've obviously, both of us have been involved in education for a good long time. And, uh, you know, I always thought that you were one of the most inspiring educators that I've gotten a chance to meet. So I'm, I'm very excited that you've got, you know, we get to have you now. Um, and we've got a lot of parents, a lot of kids even, who are asking, well, what are different things we can do at home? And for those of you who have watched uh, before, you know that we try to give an activity for you all to do together with your kids. And we put some of that stuff up on YouTube and everything else. So, yeah, I, I want to talk to you about that. That's what we're going to cover a bit today. Uh, but first, if you could, could you, I guess, introduce yourself to folks so they, they know who you are and they can decide if they want to trust you? I vouch for them, so you definitely should, but <laughs> let them figure it out. So is that okay? Yes, that's fine. Right. Okay. So good, good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Lenore Payne. I'm going into my 15th year um, in education. My experience has always been around the early childhood arena. I've taught grades preschool, kindergarten, first and second grade. Um, I was the assistant principal for Sticks Early Childhood Center for two years. Then I transitioned to principal at Clay. And then I was um, given the opportunity to lead the early childhood department with the Riverview Garden School District. So that's mm -hmm. what I've currently been doing for the last two years. Um, I also served in the Missouri Army National Guard for eight years, and I did um, a 22-month tour in Iraq. So I'm very excited about doing this, and hopefully the information that I share with you today um, will help ease some of the load with what's going on with all of the e-learning and just give you some additional things that you can do with your child outside of the virtual scene. Yeah. I think that's I think that's a great um, and uh, you know I think I think it's this is a really good opportunity I think for for folks to really get you know some of those alternative activities to do because a lot of stuff is happening with e-learning um, what what are you seeing you know with with folks maybe there's some families that can't access or don't have ready access to the internet what kind of, you know, strategies are you using to, to reach those kids? Are there like drop off packets or, or what kind of things are you doing right now? So what I'm currently doing um, every week at my school, I go to my building twice um, a week. Um, I go on the Monday and I go on the Wednesday for four hours. And my teachers, they email me um, either weekly. Some of them cre created weekly packets and some of them created monthly packets and so then I give the opportunity for the parents to you know come up to the school and we do like a drive-by style where they mm -hmm. you know like just drive up um they tell us their child name and the teacher and we give them the work and all of the resources that's needed to complete the work so we give them you know like the crayons the markers the pencils um and we also include a home activity that they can do with the entire family. So some type of like science project, but we provide um, all of the materials um, to the families and we always give them a resource sheet of different online venues that they can use and free resources. But we try to provide them with um, enough activities that they can do hands on with their child versus mm -hmm. using um, the screen time all right. of the time. 
Right, right. Because that's, yeah, I mean, I know having been on the screen now pretty much constantly for the last several weeks, it's not the best thing in the world. So, um, I mean, there's so many opportunities, and you know, because, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about this stuff too, but there's so many opportunities for learning and just everyday kind of things. Uh, right. You know, so it just, you know, thinking of everything as, as a teaching moment, especially for the little ones, because they are so, they're just ready to absorb so much and so much exactly. new. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's good. And especially, I mean, there's, you know, it's not just, you know, in areas all over the state, and especially in some rural areas where they don't have much access to like broadband internet and all that kind of stuff. Um, you right. know, it could be really a struggle just to focus on e-learning. So. Because yeah. the diff- the thing is, when it comes to early childhood, a lot of people are in the mindset that early childhood is just preschool age. But right. early childhood right. actually spans from birth to third grade. So you have from newborn up until a child is nine years old. That You know, that's what's considered um, early childhood. And so a lot of the things that you can do with your child, you simply find in your home. So, for example... Some app activities that you can do with your child is um, sorting. Like you can have your kids to like sort different things Mm -hmm. that you have um, in your home from like um, biggest to smallest, um, sorting them by color, um, working on patterns, like finding like whether you got like some Legos or you can use utensils or whatever. Just have your child to make. Um, a, B, A, B patterns, which could be like have like black, white, black, white, right. blue, white, or um, mm-hmm. however you want to do it. But specifically, if you have a kid age three, four, and five, writing is always an area that's a struggle for students uh-huh. um, during this age, and especially when they transition to kindergarten. So one activity that you can do to help students with their writing in that age group is to actually take some crayons and break um, the tips off and have the, and have your child to use the tips of the crayon to like write letters, write numbers and things of that nature, because that uh-huh. helps them with their grip and it helps them to build uh-huh. a strong grip because they really have to focus um, and use their gross motor skills because that, you know, you're only using the tip of the crayon. And so right. that in return helps them become a better writer because the grip of the tip of the crayon is essentially the same size um, of a traditional pencil. So huh. by the time your child does reach kindergarten, um, they'll be a stronger writer because their grip and spatial will be there because they've been working on it already. And so a lot of parents don't like, they're like, what you mean I have to break the tips of the crayon? And I'm like, trust me that, you know, that does sound crazy. But, yeah. you know... It actually does work because any speech, um, any OT, I'm sorry, occupational therapist will tell okay. you that's that's the first thing that they do with kids that are struggling writers is, you know, they make them use the tips of the crayons because it helps strengthen um, those muscles for them to use. Wow. And that's some other easy, other easy things that you can do, environmental print is very big. So just okay. having your kids... Um, like if you're out in the community, if you see a McDonald's um, white capsule snook signs, just make your kid tell you like, what is that? Because those are the beginning stages of reading, just recognizing and being mm-hmm. able to understand what's going on around them. And that could be reading the you know cereal boxes, like what's the name of this cereal or what's the name of this soda or what's the name of this juice? Like all of those environmental print things will help your child strengthen their reader i mean strengthen their reading now if you do have an older child um it's very important you know just to make sure that they are reading um at least 20 minutes a day and working on their math fact drill so just going from each number like start with zero go up to 20 have them to do like one plus one two plus two three plus um three plus three and things of that nature Or if they're working on multiplication, you know, doing the same so it can help build their fluency so they can still be in their routine. Now, if you have a child that's in preschool, it's very important that you still make them take a nap every day because that's what they're used to. And typically nap time is around 1130, 12 o'clock. 
for an hour and a half up to two hours. So it's, it's important that, you know, you keep that same routine up because that's what their body is used to. Because if you keep that up, then they'll pretty much stay in that same routine and hopefully, mm. you know, they'll still be able to go to bed at the same time. But, you know, I know since we've been out of school for a while, right? you know, some of my parents have told me that, you know, it's kind of hard to keep their routine and, you know, their child is staying up to like 10 and 11 o'clock now. And the right. first thing I ask, I'm like, well, are, are they still taking a nap? And they're like, well, no, nah, you know, I don't, you know, do naps anymore. And I'm like, you know, that's yeah. why, because, you know, your child is routine and, you know, you mm-hmm. have to keep that same routine up. Right. Right. Well, I'd say, I mean, you know, even even with uh, heck with adults, too. I mean, that that routine right. is really important. So, um, yeah, that's uh, wow. That's well, this is great. So you've already got some tips already. This is I, I never even heard of that crayon thing. That's uh, that's yeah. a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why I can't write very well. No one did that for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Um, what do you um, you know, I guess. Uh, you know, you talked about in, environmental, I mean, you know, when you're out and about and you're reading different things and, you know, even if you're driving or if you see it like across the street or something, um, you know, I, I think that's, that's really great. Um, what, what do you think, you know, in, in, and I've heard a couple different things about this. What do you think about, you know, literacy versus math skills versus science? You know, if you've got some parents at home who may uh, feel, and this is always a worry, even when this isn't an issue but who feel like, oh, I, I don't know enough about that topic. Um, you know, what, what, do you, what do you tell them? Is, is there a certain area that you would focus on or are there certain resources for parents out there too? Um, well, all the resources, well, I'll start with the initial question because I get this a lot from my parents. So mm-hmm. what I tell them is, you know, we all have that one subject that we felt that we were just, better at in school, whether it's reading science or math or art music. And I always say, hey, start there. But the thing is, like, when it comes to science, um, reading and math, honestly, all of that ties together. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of those things you can do, um, we do have the skill set to do. It's just that when we see our child work depending on their grade level on this e-learning some parents panic because it's like okay well this is the way i know how to do it but the work is asking me to do it 20 different steps and Mm -hmm. i tell my parents it's okay to show your child the basics and how we learn how to carry and read and do those type of things i said because they're going to arrive at the same answer and that's okay but when it comes to um if you have younger kids it could be something as simple as, okay, let's look at this box of cereal. Um, tell me the name of the cereal. Let's count the letters. What colors do you see on, you know, what colors do you see on the cereal? And you, that right there, you just t- tied math and reading, to, you know, together right there. Right. Um, you can throw science in by simply saying, what do you think is going to happen if I pour milk on the cereal? Right. Hopefully the child will say it'll make the cereal soft. And you could stretch it and say, okay, well, what do you think will happen if I pour water in the cereal? Would Uh it be the same thing? What do you think will happen if I pour, like, orange juice or, you know, different things of that nature? And you you just tie the half science and all of that together um, very quickly. Mm -hmm. But some quick, quick resources that parents can use Okay. Um, PBS Kids and Cool Math for Kids are two sites that have a lot of parental resources, mm-hmm. and it helps parents. Um, it's very parent friendly and user friendly, and whatever they're showing the student, they show the parents. So the parents will be able to, ex- you know, explain the math problems and those things. Um, or the reading passages, you know, to their students. But the biggest thing I want to say is like, I don't, you know, parents, caregivers, you know, during this time, at the end of the day, you know, please, please, please not stress. Because I know some of my parents right. feel like, they're like, man, Dr. Payne, I feel like I'm feeling my child. Or, you know, I graduated from high school, but I can't even do third grade math. And I'm like, 
Right. Yes, you can. Right. It's like, you know, just take it, you know, step by step. If you remember how you we used to do 32 plus 25, teach your child that way. That is so it, it's OK. I said, right. you know, not, nothing is um, nothing is wrong with that. Don't feel like you have to show them this exact way, because a lot of the materials that we're sending home or that's even going on with the e-learning, unfortunately, is not parent friendly. And mm-hmm. the parents are not getting the true lesson because it's almost like the parents need the teacher's lesson plan to actually see like, OK, look, yeah. what, is, what is going on? But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, just stick to the basics. Start with your strengths and you will be OK. Right. Right. Yeah, I think it's uh, well, because, you know, there's there's different exact, especially in math. I think math is probably the one that I hear the most about. Right. And right. Yeah. And in math, I mean, it's yeah, they do. I mean, you know, I've, I've been teaching for a bit and, and sometimes these kids will come in to the summer program and uh, they'll they'll be doing. I've never seen a kid do math that way with some bricks and blocks that they're drawing. Right. But but uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, you know, for some kids like and, and if they experience the way that you know how to do it, that might actually click for them better than what they've been seeing up to that point anyway. So. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't be worried. Actually, you should definitely want to do that because you never know. Right. It might be really helpful. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that's really good. And then science, you know, you think about science and we try to make it sound like a complicated thing, but really it's just asking questions about what's right and how things work, right? So, exactly. Uh, yeah, and then the resources for – so for folks who are watching right now, feel free to ask any questions you'd like. We've got some that I've got queued up already. Uh, but you can put those in the comments, and I'm I'm watching them right now. But all of the resources that Dr. Payne mentioned, uh, once the stream is over, I'll be sure to to put links to those so that you can access uh, those educational resources online too, and and use them and let us know how you like them. So um, yeah, that's great, great resources that are online right now. Um, Okay, so we talked uh, a few tips, especially about uh, the younger folks, and, and I just love the crayon thing. That was really great. But but even the mindset and, and not stressing out, I think is is like the key to all of this, right? Because this is we're going to be right. doing this for a while. So what you know, you got a kid running around and really isn't paying attention, doing all these things, and you, you just don't can't get them to sit down. And you're trying to do work at the same time from home, right? You're trying to do your job remotely or whatever it might be. Um, what what recommendations do you have for parents when, you know, the kids just not wanting to engage and not wanting to listen? Um, well, on that end, I always, I encourage my, my parents, you know, in my experience, most kids like to draw, either to mm-hmm. draw or to color. So right. if you're in a situation where you have to do what you know, you have to work and your child doesn't want to do any work on the tablet or things of that nature. Um, if you can give them as much paper as possible <laughs> with, you know, crayons, markers, you know, tell them to draw you a picture, grandma, grandpa, write a leather. Right, you know, th- you know, do things of that nature, you know, to keep them busy. Now, even though I, in my building, I, we try not, we have a technology, but we try not to use it a lot because I really um, want my kids to be engaged, like in the moment and have natural play and things of that nature. Yeah. But I do understand that a lot of our families are working. Um, from home. And so I tell my family, if your child has a tablet, it's okay to, you know, while you're working, it's okay to have your, mm-hmm. you know, let them go to their favorite game or their favorite um, yeah. website, or honestly, you know, let them watch their kids friendly um, mm-hmm. YouTube videos, because believe it or not, you know, kids, they, especially kids that are in preschool, they know how to work a tablet better they, than we do. And yeah. They're used to going to certain sites um, at school anyway. So they, you know, they they can even tell you, you know, like certain things like, well, mom or dad, I, you know, I want to go to ABC Mouth Games, to, you know, things of that nature, because they're, they're used to that already. So if it's the situation where nothing is working, you know, you're always either safe with having them to 
to draw continuously, write continuously, or um, do some type of activity um, on the tablet. But even if you if you don't have a tablet, um, if you have a basement that's safe, it's okay to let your you know child um, you know run around and play in the basement, or honestly play in their you know play in their room as long as they're not you know too loud you know those type of things you know it's okay it doesn't necessarily always have to be um tied to like an academic you know sometimes we forget that you know we just need to let our kids you know simply be right kids. right right yeah and i mean you know and all of those different you can also build off of it right so right if you've got kids who are watching something on youtube and maybe you're not fully paying attention. Or maybe you, you even watched them before. Like you, you knew what they were going to see or they watch it like 20 times in a row. I knew I was that kid. I would watch the same movie over and over again. Uh, right. But you can then build like, oh, what did you see? Um, you know, what, what looked like, what was blue and, you know, different colors and shapes and patterns and all that's really important. Um, so, you know, just taking all these opportunities to turn, just, just like we talked about at the beginning, turning them into learning opportunities for kids. Right. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's good. Sometimes, you know, it's, uh, there's a, oh, God, I can't remember his name. I just remember reading this book because when I first started teaching, I had uh, classroom management. That was the big, the big focus, right? Everybody was, oh, how do you keep them under control and everything else? But it's really... very long. Uh, no, no, there's, there's a, a, a psychologist, I can't remember, but, but he talks about the left versus the right brain, right? And mm -hmm. for kids, when they get really emotional and it's hard for them to, to self-regulate and everything else, right. That, that right brain is just takes over. And that's part of, you know, a survival technique for humans in general. But the way he described it was a kid who's, you know, maybe having a tantrum or is really having trouble getting it together is... On, you know, you're in a river and the kid's going down the river, but they're just hitting one bank to the next and they're just totally <laughs> off course and flying all over the place. But but if you think about, you know, the, just the, the analogy to a kid and their behavior being, you know, like something on a river and instead of trying to fight it so much, really going with it and getting them down to that path as safely as possible, I think is a, I don't know, it's always really stuck with me. It's been a good one. So less resisting and more working with them to figure out what avenues they really want to learn and interact with things. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty interesting. So yeah, coloring is always great. And when, when I was substitute teaching and I would walk into a classroom and didn't know what in the world was going to go on, always had those sheets just in case. Um, right. and then you see what they draw and you, you have a conversation with them and conversation skills are probably, you know, it's, that's going to be really important right now too. Cause you think about socialization and the importance of that in the school environment um, it seems like, you know, at home, we really should be thinking about, uh, just, you know, basic conversation skills too, especially with the little ones. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Vocabulary and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, well, great. Uh, so that's good. We talked about, uh, talked about kids and, you know, them not really wanting to focus right now. And, you know, you're working at the same time too. What about, um, you know, I guess, I, and, and maybe, you know, this is helpful for folks who might have multiple kids at home. Um, you know, is there is there something that, um, you know, you might recommend if you've got an older kid at home and there's some younger ones there too about, you know, ways to like organize responsibility within that to have older kids helping the young, younger kids learn or doing whatever the work they're doing? Yeah, like the the older siblings can, you know, like read to their younger siblings, mm -hmm. have their younger siblings read to them. They can do like arts and craft activities with them as far as, you know, once again, with like drawing and things of that nature. Um, they could even actually show them like the work that they're doing. Like, well, this is the math that I'm working on. So like when you get in fourth or fifth grade, you know, you'll be doing this type of math and, you know, they can do it together because younger kids, you know, they like to mimic what their older siblings are doing and they feel important and valued when um, they're in that process. So even if they can't do it, you know, like to, in their mind, they're like, "Ooh, I'm doing big kid math or, you know, "Ooh, I'm reading a big kid book. So just having them involved in the work, you know, that they're doing. 
and, you know, making sure that, you know, they're doing their work together. So it's like if we're all at the um, sitting at the table, sitting at the couch or um, in each other's room, but just mm -hmm. having the older sibling to, to kind of take on like that junior teacher role, just checking over the work that they're doing and seeing if they need help and mm -hmm. um, giving them different um, activities and things to do of that nature. Because the good thing with the older si siblings, most of them remember what they did in those, yeah. you, you know, in those younger grades and they remember what they liked. And so they'll initially start there and they could do that with their younger siblings. Mm hmm. Yep. And then teaching, too, is a really good way to learn. Right. It reinforces a lot of that. Right. Because um, sometimes, you know, the, you know, siblings listen to each other better than they do with like the parents <laughs> or even the teachers, because a lot of the times. You know, parents, after so many tries, you know, they become frustrated. And mm -hmm. so then that makes the child break down. And then you go work with your sibling and your sibling like, look, this is all you got to do right here. And right. it's like, oh, OK, I get it. You know, I, I get it now. So it's like right. sometimes, you know, your siblings are better teachers than, you know, the parents per se. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What do you think? You know, this is going to be. I mean, it, it, it's kind of amazing because of all the technology that we have now. Um, but what do you think, you know, over once, once, once we go back to school, right? What, what do you think the impact this is going to have on education and learning moving forward? Do you think that this is, you know, I, I know like some folks are talking about, oh, when are we going to go back and all that, but, but just beyond that, like the, the fact that, there is so much learning that's going to have to go on the home right now during this time. Do you think that that's going to have a positive, negative, maybe no change impact on, on how education is going to be looked at moving forward with all of these, you know, folks trying to figure out all of this stuff? Um, I think what this has exposed is that um, right now, all, you know, all technology is not good technology. Mm -hmm. And one could easily say that, oh, but this would have like, um, a positive effect and a positive change for the future. Yeah. But what we're going through right now is like we're, you know, we're realizing that, you know, hey, everybody doesn't have access to technology like you think that they do. Like everybody don't have um, the capability to have Wi-Fi at home or some of our students, you know, they're being raised by either older parents or older grandparents who are not that, you know, who are not that technology um, savvy. So we're realizing that, you know, hey, this is, um, we, it's a good thing. On mm -hmm. paper, it sounds good, but it's, it's really more cumbersome, cumbersome than anything because we didn't think about like, okay, well, how do we teach the families to use like Google Classroom or how to use Zoom or like even how to turn, you know, turn in the work and some school, you know, not knocking any school districts, but, you know, some did a better job at communicating, you know, than others. But, you know, some parents are still in the un unknown because they don't know, like, OK, well, I want my child to do the work, but, you know, I can't sign in or we don't have Wi-Fi. So are they going to fail? And it's like a lot of families don't know that. Um, this yeah. e-learning is not going to hurt their child grade at all. It can only help their, um, help their child grade, but they can't lower it. So what mm -hmm. that means, however their child was performing before all of this happened, like if your child had a B in math, um, then he or she still has that B in math if you don't complete none of the e-learning work. But if your child completes the e-learning work, and, you know, it gets turned in, then the B could turn into an A, but it's definitely not going to go lower than, a, you know, lower than a B. Mm -hmm. But I do think it, it is, uh, the technology piece is a good piece because for the most part, our students know, they do know how to use it because they use it in, the, you know, in the classrooms already. Right. But they didn't, a lot of our families didn't have the technology at home already. And some school districts did provide it and some didn't. And now some are scrambling to 
try to get laptops and iPads to families, but it's like, okay, well, the school year is almost over with, so mm-hmm. do we really want to do that? And for the families that have been doing it, you know, a lot of them are over it because, the you know, the kids are tired of, you know, they're tired of doing the work. They actually want to be at school in the physical classroom. Right. <laughs> and the parents, they're getting stressed out because it's like, you're showing me how, you know, I see this math problem and I know how I want to show my child. But every time I try to show my child, he or she tells me that's not how my teacher do it. Now, mom, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. So that, you know, they get frustrated. So I I think if anything, um, we may, you know, we're truly going to get back to the basics when, you know, school does resume, because sometimes, you know, those basics. Um, It's what truly matters and what kids, you know, truly need. And the technology piece would just be an added benefit. Right. Right. Yeah. um, Yeah. It seems like so much of this comes down to access because what you really don't want to end up happening is, you know, for for folks, you know, school is supposed to be you know, this, this opportunity for, well, this, this equalizer, right? So, so many folks right. access it and all of that, but what you really don't want to have happen is that just those who are able to access all this wonderful stuff, all of this e-learning are the only ones who are getting it, which just increases that gap even more. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So I, you know, I, you know, I guess looking, looking at now, I know you talked a, a lot about, um, you know, the, the different kinds of things that we could, and, and just like almost specifically, it's, it's about access to, to e-learning in general, whether that's through infrastructure, internet access, whatever it might be. Um, and then also, you know, having opportunities, it sounds like for, for parents to learn how this stuff is working and, and maybe even be more engaged in, in that learning, you right. know, before something like this happens. So they know how to adapt if there is a situation like this. Um, I mean, what, what other, what other things would you recommend? I mean, you know, uh, for, for folks who are making decisions right now, I know our legislature is going back pretty soon too. Uh, but, uh, you know, with our education commissioners and everybody else, what, what kind of things would you say, Hey, if I'm in that position, I would be looking at these policy issues to really consider, especially given, you know, your experience right now and in your family's experience. So what I, um, De- definitely would look at is the fact that if in the event that if we ever are in a you know pandemic time like this, just truly mm-hmm. making sure that um, all schools um, have one-on-one access to technology for you know for their students, so um, we can provide families with the to, um, not only just the technology as far as the tablets, but with the um, the wireless um, as well. So, you know, it's like, here's your, you know, here's your tablet, here's your wireless box. And the, di- you know, so the district will be able to provide all families, not only with the te- technology, but with the internet access, you know, mm-hmm. as well. And that would, you know, eliminate half the battle right there. And even making sure that um, when we're assigning this work, you know, we do have, designated um individuals that's you know that will work with families every day for like a certain time period like maybe an hour to two hours like you know mom dad this is you know this is the math that your child is currently working on this is how we've introduced it to your child let's do a few problems let's you know what questions do you have so the parents will feel more comfortable um helping their child or even providing live tutoring sessions as well. Mm-hmm. So don't just give them, don't just give them the work and say, you know, have fun, mom. But hey, let's, pro- you know, let's provide some live online tutoring um, as well. So kids can re- still receive their real time help and be able, you know, to ask questions and the parents can learn in that moment with their child as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, that sounds, that sounds good to me. Um, how are, how are your, uh, how are your teachers doing? Overall, my teachers, they're doing okay. I mean, quite naturally, you know, they would rather be at work. Um, they miss the students, but 
we have what's called um, class tag. And so all of my teachers have a class tag account. And so it's like an online platform. And that's how we do all of our communications with our family. So um, my teachers are able to face to like have live conversations with their class. They still do like morning meetings and things with their class because it's live and parents have the opportunity to, you know, just click on the little link and they all see each other. And for those families that can't participate, it's um, recorded and saved and archived every day. So they could just go back to like what they missed and see like, what was the lesson of the day, the leather of the day and things um, of that nature. So yeah. um, they're doing OK. They like that. But they, like I said, they would rather be in the classroom. Right. Right. Do you because um, I mean, it's it's going to seem like this is going to blend in to summer uh, pretty, pretty quick. Do you uh, do you think that there's going to be any kind of programming that will go on like this during the summer? Yeah, I mean, I I can say for a lot of the county school districts, like, mm -hmm. we're already prepared for the summer. It's kind of like we're going to continue to do what we're doing before our um, students that are in third grade transition and the fourth that's reading below, like, two grade levels, they, um, they're they in talks of having, like, virtual summer school um, mm -hmm. for, those um, for those students. So some, a lot of school districts are in talks right now of trying to set up some type of um, virtual summer school for those students that were reading two, three grade levels behind. And for everybody else, there will be like a continued process of what we're doing right now with yeah. the e-learning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, cause I know parents, parents are probably not looking forward to, uh, having this go on for too long, but nobody is really. And it's, right. you know, it's a way to, to, to make sure that we're all a lot safer. Um, and it's important. That's again, it's another teaching opportunity too, because this is overtaken so much. Um, you know, it's going to be front and center for any kid who's out there and, you know, learning the importance right. of just like washing your hands, you know, and, and what that means and how, how, you know, diseases work and where they come from. And you know, there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity there too, I think. So, um, yeah. And then healthcare, I mean, there are healthcare workers out there and, you know, the different things that we're seeing on social media and on the news, right. you know, what they do as a job, why it's important. And I think, you know, we're also seeing just the importance of a lot of jobs um, out there that folks have often taken for granted, like folks who are working at the grocery stores or the pharmacies and everything else. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, are you, so I, I know that, you know, with, with school being closed, there, there are a lot of those workers who are going out, um, and they have to be there because otherwise we're not able to get food and everything else. Have, mm -hmm. have you seen any trouble with that with, I don't know, with your families or, or folks that, you know, different different folks that you're talking to where, you know, some folks, especially like if they're doing, you know, that kind of work, like a lot of first responders now, they're able to access um, child care and, and everything else. But for folks who aren't in that quote unquote emergency personnel designation, um, are you seeing some challenges for, for them because they have to be there, but they also have to take care of their kids? Um. Yeah, in the beginning, like when all of this first started, um, we saw a lot of challenges because families were trying to find that balance. And mm -hmm. it was like, OK, well, what am I like? What am I going to do for, ch you know, for child care and things of that nature? But some centers are still open and they're, you know, they're only accepting like they only accepted students for from those families that, you know, worst you know we're still working in those emergency situations so yeah once all of like all of that got set up and once families were able to put like a schedule and a plan in place then the stress level went down but like for the first two you know for the first two weeks it was um you know it was a lot of it was a lot of stress for the families because you know they didn't they didn't know what to do and especially when they 
like if I got three young kids, um, ages three, four, and five, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if I want to go to work because I really don't, you know, you can't leave them at the house by themselves. Right. Um, but it's like I still need to work. So, you know, some families were just fortunate enough to be able to have their kids, you know, to go over like the grandparents' house, you mm-hmm. know, like why, you know, why they still work, but, you know, still practicing so social distancing and um, working on the hand washing and things of that nature. But for the most part, I would say um, with my families, it's better now. I mean, of course, everyone wants, you know, we wanted to go back to the normal, but right. m- it, most of my families are in a routine now. Yeah, right, right. Um, yeah, I guess just adapting and finding those folks who can, who can watch your kids for a little bit during the day. So, uh, okay. So, so we talked about some activities specifically, um, the, the crayon tip breaking one and having them right with that, I think is great. Uh, looking around, we talked about cereal and pouring different things on it and really just exploring the world that's around you and asking questions. And, uh, of course, coloring and drawing as a last resort, whenever you need it. So, um, is there any, any other, uh, specific activities that you think of that are easy to do at home? Um, and again, we'll put those resources, the links and everything in the comments, but is there anything that, I don't know, that you in particular enjoy doing or, or, or watching kids do, or you see that they're enjoying that's easy to do at home? Well, for families that have older, um, older kids, like this is something that like I'm working with my son on. I mean, we've been working on it for even before this happened, but we've really increased it now because we have so much time together. But um, because, you know, like in a lot of high schools, they've taken out like those basic things that kids, you know, need to know, which, you know, you need to know how to cook. You need Mm -hmm. to know how to balance the checkbook. You need to know what a money order is and how to write a money order. So those are the type of things that like I'm doing with my son right now. It's like I'm showing him, you know, like, you know, he cooks breakfast, he cooks, you know, dinner. And um, I show him like how um, I balance my checkbook online when it comes to like paying bills and things of that nature. So it's like I'm teaching him those skills that, you know, he may not necessarily learn, you know, get at school. And so it's OK to to do those things, you know, with your, you know, with your child, like showing them, you know, like how to cook and how to wash clothes and, you know, how to properly clean the bathroom and things of that nature. Because those are the, you know, essential skills that, you know, that they will need, you know, throughout, um, throughout their life. Mm-hmm. And so just, and those can even be family activities that um, you can do with younger kids as well. Um, even with the cooking piece, I mean, course you know you have to tailor it um to fit their needs to make sure that you know they're not touching the stoves and things of that nature but those um everyday skills that we're so used to doing as adults you know sometimes we forget that you know we were kids once and we had to be taught and trained so it's like you know we need to do those home essential skills with our kids as well Right, right. I think that's great. That's really, uh, that's really helpful. Because yeah, you don't you don't get that stuff in school, right? So, no. Every time you've got to do it anyway, so you might as well have them do it with you. Exactly. Uh, right. Yeah, I think you bring up another point that folks, you know, we we oftentimes don't talk enough about, but it's also now that you're going to have your kids at home so much, you also want to make sure that there's nothing out there that they can grab really easily that you might not have really thought of. Um, right. But, you know, dangerous things or checking the outlets and, um, you know, any weapons that might be home and making sure that all that stuff is secure and away from them. Um, Because like during the day, you might be used to, you know, having stuff out there because no one's in the house. But um, you got folks there now. So definitely want to look for that stuff, too. Um, let's see any, anything, any, anything else that you'd like to share? I think this was, this was super helpful. I mean, this was, this is pretty great, but is there anything else that's, that that's on your mind or that you'd like to share with folks? Um, no, sir. I yeah, that was pretty good, right? I felt good. Is that pretty good? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, great. Well, I really appreciate you being here. I'm going to throw up um, you know, some of our stuff there too. But this was everybody, in case you missed the intro for some reason, go back, rewind it, watch this thing again. We'll have this up on the podcast too a little bit later. We'll get this uploaded and everything else. Uh, but this was Dr. Payne. Dr. Payne who's the director of the Early Childhood Academic Center, uh, Michelle Obama Early Childhood Academic Center at uh, Riverview Gardens. Um, and we were talking about all these different tips and tricks and, and things to really consider when you're, you've got your kids and you're teaching them at home. And uh, we're just so happy that you were able to make it and, and share your knowledge with so many folks and, and uh, you know, find a way to, to, to do this. And I think it's going to be very helpful for a lot of folks who are out there watching, wherever you are. So um, yeah, if you've got any questions or anything, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, I'll check. We've also got, you know, some just some from some of the activities I've done with kids. We've got some, you know, easy worksheets. We talked a bit about emotional learning and uh, making sure that kids can can, you know, share that too. And this is a really great opportunity for even adults to do that and learn how to communicate better. Um, so we'll have all that information up there. But if you've got any questions, you know, we'll I'll hit you up too because you know maybe I'll have to get an answer from you. So. Um, great. Well, thank you all for uh, watching, uh, enjoying the Allod Pod, and I'll throw up uh, some of our contact info. So if you do need anything, you can always visit us online at all of these different places. And uh, we will be back to do more of these. Uh, this weekend, we'll have a special um, that we'll be announcing pretty soon, too. Um, but uh, we really appreciate it. So thanks for coming, Dr. Payne. Thank you. All righty.